Close your eyes and breathe deeply. And notice where you feel the breathing in your body. Focus your attention there. And then ask yourself if deep breathing feels good. If it does, keep it up. If it doesn't, you can change. You can try longer breathing, it's even still, or shorter, faster, slower, heavier, lighter. Breathe more shallow. Find what kind of breathing feels good for the body right now. When you talk to yourself like this, asking questions about the breath, that's called evaluation. Focusing your attention on the breath, that's directed thought. This is one of John Lee's teachings. He was amazing in the way that he was able to take the Buddha's teachings and, and figure out what they meant, because there's so many passages in the canon where the, the Buddha gives very short instructions for meditation. doesn't explain them very thoroughly. And John Lee came along. And it wasn't that he was a scholar, he was a meditator. But he was able to compare his meditation to the text, and find meaning in the text that other people hadn't seen. I mean, this may be one of the reasons why they say that among a John Munn's students, he was a John Munn's favorite. He was very quick, very intelligent, and very true to what he was doing. You read his life and he went through lots of hardships. He was a very determined meditator. And so as we think about him on the day of his passing, it's good to think about his good qualities, his determination, his intelligence, and his compassion. He taught a lot of people, went all over Thailand, he taught a lot of people. When he finally set up a monastery outside of Bangkok, all kinds of people came to ordain, men and women. And a lot of them were really difficult. And John Fuang, who was his student, who was my teacher, went and commented to him one time that some of the people they had met at ordaining there were really difficult. And John Lee said, well, maybe if we can just get their hands moist a little bit and they can pick up a few grains of sand as they touch, touch the Dharma. In other words, he was willing to go out of his way so that people could have even the slightest bit of benefit. So we take that to heart. We're here to practice not only for ourselves, we should start with ourselves. But the benefits of the practice go out. It's not something you just do in a monastery. You observe the precepts everywhere. You observe, you try to maintain mindfulness everywhere. And when you do that, you protect your mind. And as you're protecting your mind, you're protecting other people too. You're creating a refuge inside. This is another one of John Lee's favorite teachings, which is that we take refuge in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. We can take refuge on the outer level, but you can also take refuge on the inner level. And it's when you do it on the inner level that it really gives, shows its benefits. In other words, on the outer level we think about the Buddha, who was that prince who 2,500 years ago decided to go out into the forest to find the way to the deathless. The Dharma is what he taught, is written down in books. And the Sangha is the monastic order that he established. And we can depend on those, we've had to depend on those for the fact that the Dharma is still alive and we still know about it. But as St. John Lee would say, the Buddha himself passed away a long time ago. And when you're in trouble, you can't ask for books to come and help you. And as for the monastics, well, you have good ones and bad ones. If you want a really dependable refuge, you build it out of qualities inside. You look at the qualities that the Buddha developed. His wisdom, his purity and compassion. And you try to develop those within you. You look at the Dharma. What does it teach? It teaches virtue, concentration, discernment. You try to develop those qualities within you. You look at the Sangha. And they were the ones who took what the Buddha taught. And instead of trying to change it to suit their their preferences, they were able to change themselves to fit in with the Dharma. And so you try that too. It's in this way that you develop qualities inside that you really can depend on. While you're alive, you're going to be meeting up with all kinds of issues. It's just a normal part of the world. As you approach the end of life, you're going to be make voice facing choices. We want to face them with virtue, concentration, discernment. Wisdom, purity, and compassion. All these good qualities are going to be able to come in and help you at that point. 
that's when you realize, yes, you really can depend on yourself. And that's when the refuge is really solid. So think about what qualities you have inside, the good qualities you have inside, and ask yourself, are they dependable yet enough or, or not? And if they're not, well, dedicate yourself to making them reliable. Because where else are you going to find any sort of refuge in this world? We depend on institutions, we depend on society, and then we see these things falling apart very easily. But if you've got a refuge inside, then no matter what happens in the world outside, you've got something you can depend on. And you become someone that other people can depend on as well. It's in this way that the practice is a gift. So by being mindful, by being alert, by being discerning, you're also being compassionate for your well-being and the well-being of everybody around you. And it's good that we think about the people who pass this teaching on, like a John Lee, the dedica dedication they put into their practice, the determination, the willingness to observe, try things out, and then pass on what they learned. You have to ask yourself, without them, where would it be now? Well, we wouldn't have the drama, and the world would be a much darker place. So. Show some appreciation for the light that there is, and try to maintain it within your own heart. <laughs>